Let's do chapter 13 of English literature. Rain, rain, go away. This chapter deals with the two families, the Sakaros and the Wrights, who live in the same neighborhood, yet they do not talk to each other. The Wright family consists of Lillian Wright, George Wright and their child Tommy. While the Sakaros, they do not reveal their identities or their profession to anybody in the neighborhood. They like to keep to themselves and they always act weird. Lillian tells George that she always finds them sunbathing, which is, as you can see in the picture, sitting under the sun and trying to get a tan. And they were super scared of rain. They did not like rain. And as a result of which, whenever they would see the clouds um, coming up together, Mrs. Sakaro would shout out and ask her son to come inside the house before it starts to pour. This behavior is quite weird for the rights and they wonder why they behave in such a manner. So one day Lillian goes to the Sakaro's house and invites them to visit the Murphy's Park. They do agree to go along with them but before that they confirmed if it would rain on that particular day or not and when they were traveling the Sakaros carried a pocket radio with them so that they could hear about the weather forecasts and the little boy carried an aneroid barometer with him to measure the air pressure. And they all sat at the back seat of the car and they started moving towards the Murphy's Park. The Sakaros had a very weird behavior when they were at the park. They enjoyed playing darts, poker games, bowling, they took pictures and recorded their voices. But the only thing that they had in the park was cotton candy and they literally consumed about a dozen of cotton candy. When Mr. Sakaro was offered by George a hamburger, he looked very grim and shook his head. And when Mrs. Sakaro was offered an orange drink, she reacted as if somebody had thrown the drink on her face. As they were enjoying the park, there comes a news that there could be thunder showers, which, which gave them a panic attack. And the Sakaro started behaving very badly or they started forcing the rights to take them home as fast as possible before it would rain, as if the rain would like literally uh, cause them so much harm. They behaved in a very weird fashion and they kept on telling George to drive fast so that they could reach home before it actually poured. Mrs. Sakaro's hands trembled and the Sakaro youngsters seemed to be on the verge of tears of seeing the thunder shower and they insisted George to drive as fast as possible and it looked kind of threatening and a kind of rude attitude for Lillian. And George kept on relieving them by telling them that, you know, they would be uh, at home in just two minutes before even it would start raining, they would be home. And the Sakaros tumbled out, their faces were drawn with tension. And finally, when they reached home, they started running towards their door. The heavens opened and the rain came down in giant drops and suddenly burst out and... Um, the Sakaros looked despairingly or very sadly at the clouds. Their faces blurred as the rain hit. They blurred and they shrank. And all the three shriveled or you can say wrinkled and became smaller and collapsing within their clothes which sank down into three stick wet heaps. So this itself is a mystery. The story ends as a mystery as to who the Sakaro family was. It was not a human being. That is the reason they were afraid of water and rain because they were kind of 
as mrs wright says they were made of sugar and they were afraid that they would melt that was the reason why they insisted on going home fast and they tried to avoid rain and that is why they would be always found sunbathing in order to keep themselves uh, protect themselves from not getting melted so i hope you all understood the story and thank you